new proclamations. What wise men, great men, medical men, professional people have not been able to do, God will do it. All those things that are forgotten, your forgotten strength, your forgotten power, your forgotten revelation, everything you said, I had a dream long ago. And I thought, this is what I will do. I've forgotten now, your forgotten vision will come up again. Passion will come up again. Revelation will come up again. New life will come up again in your life in Jesus' name. Only Christ Jesus has the power of this new year. An unforgettable encounter beckons. We are connecting to the God of wonders this new year for salvation and deliverance. Welcome GCK to Asaba. Delta State, Nigeria, January 26th to 31st, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily and Global Sunday Worship at or 700 hours GMT. Also featuring ministers and professionals conference with Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Young Professionals. It's a new year of wonders this 2023. From the Niger Delta, the oil of anointing will be transported by satellite and all our social media links to over 150 countries of the world. Join the team in GCK audience as the man appointed by God, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoi, connects the world to an unforgettable encounter with the God of Wonders. Glorious music ministrations by choirs from nations across the world with guest music ministration by Jonathan Lee. Darkness gone. Yeah. Premature death cancelled. Yeah. Yours is now to reap the benefit. GCK, the, the gospel, gospel to every creature. Let us pray. Almighty God, we bless your name for the privilege we have once again today to come before you. We know that as we come, you will teach us in this Bible study of today, in Jesus' name. We pray that your spirit will apply the word and make it relevant to our situation today so that we can continue to grow spiritually and so that our lives will bring glory unto your name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. We we'll still continue with our study of the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Now, we are in chapter 2. Today, we are studying from verse 8 through to verse 10. Let's read as we study. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. As we have emphasized already, false prophets and heretic teachers were troubling the children of God at Colossae with vain, empty words, high-sounding words, but empty, prolonged, protracted discourse and debate, but vain. And here Paul deals directly with their heresy and with their false doctrine. He tells us, the very source of the false doctrine. He tells us the very end of the false doctrine. And he tells us that the people that were peddling the false doctrine were uninspired. They were not getting their so-called wisdom from above. He showed that these false prophets were deceitful and destructive. And he warned the church and exhorted the true believers to be watchful against the entrance of any error. And we still need this kind of warning today because the Bible tells us very clearly that as the end of time runs to a close, 
There will be false prophets and false teachers. Let's look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Reading from verse 5. Back up to verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. In verse 10 and verse 11. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And these are the very days that we are living, where, when there will be many deceivers all over the world. And the warnings of Paul the Apostle, inspired by the Spirit of God, is very relevant for this hour and for this moment. And we do well that we take note and that we take heed of what the Lord is telling us in the epistle of Peter the epistle general of Peter. Second Peter, chapter 2, from verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the law that put them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Here again we have the Holy Spirit one in the church and telling us that as there were false prophets and false teachers in those days, so there shall still be false teachers among the people of God. And he tells us what they will bring in. They may call it new doctrine. They may call it new revelation. But in effect, it will be heresy. They will even deny the Lord that bought them. Which means, some of them might have known the Lord before. But then they will now deny him. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So then we see that the times in which we are living, it's the time when there could be vain deceit, human philosophy, traditions of men, rudiments of the world to deceive people and to win them away or woo them away from the Lord. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, from verse 29, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. The heretic teachers that came to Colossae, they were speaking perverse things. They wanted to draw disciples away from the Lord, and draw disciples unto themselves. And in these three verses we're studying today, Paul the Apostle talked about warnings against godless systems and the danger of the godless false systems. Then he points out the anchor of the soul. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians Chapter 2, reading from verse 8 again. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Paul's systems have always made attempts to turn the people of God away from the truth, away from righteousness, away from sound doctrine, and away from Christ. 
it has always been the attempt of the devil to use its messengers to turn Christians away from Christ and from the way of the truth. And God has always sent his servants to warn his people in every generation. God's servants always teach the truth plainly and clearly to preserve Christ's disciples from error and from falsehood. If we know the truth, every system of error will collapse before us. And here Paul the Apostle emphasized the truth so that the system of the heretics will collapse before the believing Colossian Christians. In the warning, he says, Beware, beware, lest any man spoil you, lest any man deceive you, lest any man trap you and ensnare you, or lest any man will enslave you and destroy you through philosophy and vain deceit. You will see that this kind of warning runs throughout the word of God. Let's look at Deuteronomy. Chapter 13. You will see very clearly that from early times, the people of God have always been warned against false godless systems. Deuteronomy chapter 13 from verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Here we find warning from the man of God, Moses. And it was the Lord warning through him that the people of God will beware lest a false prophet or a dreamer of dreams would lead them astray with empty, vain words. In Matthew chapter 7, the Lord Jesus Christ himself sounded a note of warning against being led astray by false prophets. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. Sometimes you will listen to people that will say, the Bible says, judge not, that ye shall not be judged. By their own interpretation, they mean, we should never speak against false prophets, erroneous system, that we should never speak against anyone that is teaching error, that we just preach our own, and let them preach their own. Other people will say, love should be the overruling thing. And if we have love, we never want people against others that are false. But Jesus Christ was full of love. And in his love for humanity, as well as for the church in particular, he warned the church, and he warned everyone, saying, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are deceptive, they are destructive, and they are ravening wolves. And Jesus even pointed out how we will know them. He said, ye shall know them by their fruits, the fruit of their teaching, the fruit we see in their converts. By that we shall know that they are not truthful, but they are false. In Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven 
of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Verse 12. Then understood they how that he bid them not beware of the leaven of bread, but to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So we will see that the warnings are very clear in Scripture. The heretics that came to Colossae and the many heretics that are still coming in the midst of the people of God today, they claim to have superior knowledge. They claim to have superior revelation. But the Spirit of God revealed through, through Paul the Apostle that their system was made up of vain human philosophy. In Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. The warning still continues, telling us that we as children of God shall not be led astray, shall not be sidetracked with the error of heretics and false preachers. Philippians chapter 3 verse 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concession. It says, beware of dogs. These people that will say they are preachers of the gospel, but they are not meek as sheep, they bark, they shout, they fight over bones and over money, and they'll bark and make trouble like dogs. Beware of those who say they are preaching the gospel, but they're wicked and violent as dogs. Beware of evil workers. They will pretend to be gospel workers. They will pretend to be spiritual. They will pretend that they're serving the Lord, but they are evil workers. Beware of the concision. That is, the people that will be talking about circumcision, or physical thing, or physical mark, or natural mark of wanting to follow the Lord. But the real circumcision of heart, they do not have, and they do not understand. Beware of them. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. And beware of the concession. Let's go back to Second Peter. Chapter 2. From verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves sweet destruction. If you think there is no danger, anyone carrying the Bible, you can follow. Anyone that opens the house for Bible study or for a miracle or for prayer or for preaching, you are going to go there. It says, beware, because it's not everyone preaching out of the Bible that is saying the truth. If it is everyone that you see at the corner of the street, on the open field, opening the Bible, a legend that is preaching the gospel that we are going to follow and listening to. The Bible says, Beware, because these people will bring in damnable heresies. You might say, Well, if they teach anything false, it has no effect on me. But the Bible says they are damnable heresies, things that will damn and destroy your soul. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom. The way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. The warnings are very clear in Scripture, and we should beware to make sure that we do not fall into the trap of false prophets teachers of godless systems and heretics that are going about pretending to be servants and messengers of the Lord. Now, the Spirit of God tells us that their heresies are made up of three or four things. One, philosophy. Two, being deceived. Three, tradition of men. Four, rudiments of the world. Come back to Colossians chapter 2. 
verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Here is where we need wisdom. Because these false teachers will pretend to be apostles of Christ. They will call their teaching by some good names and titles. They may call it end of time revelation. They may call it a new revelation. They may call it spiritual truth. They may call it hidden mystery of the kingdom of God. They may say it reveals the hidden power in man. They may say it brings in the age of enlightenment. They may say it is the last final prophetic truth before the coming of the Lord. But Paul the Apostle says, let not their titles or their subjects fool you. They are one. Vain philosophy. Vain deceit. Tradition of men. Rudiments of the world. And their source is not from Christ. Let's look at these things that Paul the Apostle has made allusion to. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 18 and 21. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? Order some. He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Verse 21. For the Athenians, all the Athenians, and strangers which were there, spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. These vain philosophies will not lead to God. But they will deceive the soul. It may appear new. And it will be spoken or preached in some weighty words, in some big grammar. But never mind, they are just vain and empty. Paul the Apostle also uses the words tradition of men to qualify or to explain what they were teaching. In Mark chapter 7, Jesus also spoke about such a thing, the tradition of men. Mark chapter 7, from verse 7. How be it, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Verse 9, and he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. And the false prophets of the godless system, teachers of godless, worldly system, they will always teach the tradition of men. And they never go beyond what Paul the Apostle called the rudiments of the world. Rudiments of the world. Basic knowledge of the world but that cannot make a person to know God or to get nearer unto the Lord. There are theories about God, about the world, about eternity, about heaven, about hell, are just vain and empty and will never satisfy the soul. Let's now go to the next point, danger of false system. The danger of false system. What does it do? If a person will accept or believe or embrace the false systems and the godless systems of these heretics. Verse 8. Again, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. The word spoil is very important. Beware, lest any man spoil you 
So then the danger of the false system is that the false system will spoil you. The word spoil in Greek is very significant. It means to kidnap. That means a kidnapper coming to kidnap you with false erroneous doctrine, taking you away from the kingdom of God and taking you into darkness. The word, the word spoil also means in Greek to be led away into slavery. Here the believers were. They had been set free and they were enjoying the liberty that they had in Christ. And the false system was coming in to spoil them. That means to lead them away into slavery or into captivity. Interestingly, the word spoil, as the Greek people use the word, that's the Greek word that Paul the Apostle used. It means to rape. It means for a man to come suddenly and violently upon a woman and then destroy that woman or get that woman into sin involuntarily by force bruising and hurting that woman and so you see when you accept false system the devil with his messengers come upon you and you are spoiled it's like you lose your spiritual virtue and eventually you are destroyed let's look at the use of the word spoil in different parts of the bible for you to understand actually what paul the apostle meant when he said beware lest any man spoil you beware of the danger that can come upon you of being spoiled in exodus chapter 12 verse 36 and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the egyptians that word spoiled there means they took away their precious gold and silver they took away their wealth they took away something from them as they were leaving them finally Therefore, the word spoil means that the devil will see you have eternal life, a precious possession. And you have a crown, a precious possession. Your name is in the book of life, a precious possession. Now beware lest any man spoil you. Beware lest any man come upon you and take away that precious thing that you have. For Samuel chapter 17. For Samuel chapter 17 verses 53 and 54 and the children of israel returned from chasing after the philistines and they spoiled their tents and david took the head of, Phil of, Phil of the philistine and brought it to jerusalem but he put his armor in his tent you will notice the use of the word spoiled in verse 53, Goliath had been defeated. He had been killed. And all the tents of the Philistines that, that had precious things and that had armors for the battle, the children of Israel came into their tents and he took away all those things. And the Bible says that means they spoiled their tents. You see, when you read that in the English language, you will think it just means to destroy the tents and leave every other thing there intact. But no. It means that they took away the things that are precious. Remember what we're looking at? Beware lest any man spoil you. You know what that means? Beware lest any man will take your armor away. Will take the precious things away. And all the things you have within your spiritual tent. Beware lest any heretic, any false teacher, any false prophet will take all those things away. Songs of Solomon. Chapter 2, verse 15. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. For our vines have tender graves. You will see the use of the word spoil here. It means something a little bit different from what we've been talking about. You see a vine having tender graves. And these graves are to bring nourishment to people. 
and then you have some little foxes and some termites and some insects eating the real thing out of the grapes, out of the vine. And therefore the vines now, after they have been spurred, they are not good for food anymore, not good for nourishment anymore. What the Lord is telling us is that we as Christians, we have some juice, some grapes, we have some nourishment. And we can edify the life of one another. You as a member of the church, you have some juice, some gift, and some grace to edify the lives of other people. Beware, lest anyone spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Lest anyone will take away from you the sap, the juice, the grace, the gift in you. So that now, nobody will be able to take your vine or take your grapes and benefit. Beware, lest you lose spiritual quality. And as you look at other parts of the word of God, you will see that the word spoil means to deceive, to trap, to ensnare, to enslave, to destroy, to take away the precious things you have. Let's come back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. If you follow through on the meaning of the word spoil, it means Paul the Apostle was saying, Be beware lest any man kidnap you through philosophy and vain deceit. Beware lest anyone will lead you astray and lead you away to slavery and captivity through philosophy and vain deceit. Beware lest anyone will deceive and trap you, will ensnare and enslave you, and destroy you through philosophy and vain deceit. Let's read this verse again and understand what the Lord is telling us. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ the high-sounding knowledge and theory of these teachers of human wisdom promised much. But Paul the Apostle said it had no profit. Much profit, sorry, much promise, but no profit at all. And here is what you find from false prophets. False prophets are like politicians. They promise much, but they profit little. False prophets will promise you things on earth, things in eternity, things that will bless your family, things that will make times change, but they profit nothing. Paul's prophets are out to deceive. And you will never be able to get what they are promising. They have a hook, and they bait that hook. And their baited hook brings painful death rather than a better life. You see, when a fish in the sea sees a hook with bait, he will think that the bitch will nourish his life, give, him a, give it a better life. But then you know, it brings painful death. And the baited hook of the false preachers, the false prophets, and the heretic teachers, they bring painful death rather than better life. Their philosophy cannot go beyond the rudiments of the world. That means elements of infantile religion from immature people who are incapable of receiving saving revelation truth from above. Their false teaching will deceive and destroy and damn the soul. Beware therefore, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and being deceived. What then is the anchor of the soul? Before we look at the anchor of the soul, we want to see all the warnings in the word of God that will show us what our attitude ought to be to the false prophets or to the deceiver. Let's just run through very quickly. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you Neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. Why? Verse 9. For they prophesy falsely 
unto you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. If anybody comes to you with philosophy, instead of telling us that we can be cleansed through the blood of Jesus Christ, he's telling us a, another way of overcoming sin. Instead of telling us of the power of prayer, when prayed in the name of Jesus, he's telling us of prayer in the name of an angel. Instead of telling us about how to purify our lives and get ready for the rapture, he's telling us that this world will continue forever. There will be no rapture. There will be no second coming. There will be no tribulation. Things will become better and better. And we are going to inherit this world. We are going to be here forever and ever. There is no heaven. Don't let them deceive you. Because God said they prophesy falsely. They teach false erroneous system unto you. I have not sent them, says the Lord. Therefore, we ought to beware. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. We can never be wiser than the Bible. We can never be better than what the apostle is telling us. It says, avoid them. In my Christian experience and in my Christian life, I've seen some people that knew the Lord, that loved the Lord, and they began to listen to false prophets. And in those days, I was privileged to speak to them, saying, beware. Oh, they assured me they will never be deceived. They assured me they knew the truth enough. They assured me they were grounded and rooted in the truth of the doctrine of the word of God. I said, but the word of God says, beware. And some of them will tell me that that is just meant for new converts, for immature people, for those who cannot um, discern between right and wrong, left and right, but they can because they are matured. It's painful for me to tell you today that a lot of them have gone astray. Some of them went astray for some years, and then they tried to come back. But even when they came back, the original anointing had been lost. Original love and consecration had been lost. And the original virtues and grace and gift they had, had been lost. We'll never be wiser than the Bible. If we have been warned, let us take the warning. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. You find somebody who has been a house fellowship leader before, area leader before, has been a preacher before, and a coordinator before, and has been a zonal leader before, a pastor before, a preacher of the word of God before, an evangelist before, maybe in deeper life, or outside deeper life. And he's saying, well, I used to believe that. One man, one wife. I used to believe no divorce and remarriage. I used to believe the rapture will take place before the great tribulation. I used to believe that the coming of the Lord is imminent. It will come very soon and suddenly. But then he says, I've changed my mind now. The Bible says at that point, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Beware, mark them, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which he have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. You will be deceived if you are a simple-hearted fellow, if you do not know too much of the word of God. And even when you think you know, you can be led astray and you can be deceived. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 16, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their watch will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hermenius and Pilatus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and they overthrow the faith of some. Beware lest anybody will overthrow your faith make you to backslide, go away from the law. 
in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers love. The warnings are very clear in scripture. What are we now to do? We are to have confidence in the anchor of the soul, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. The completeness and the fullness of Christ serves as an anchor for the soul. Instead of being tossed to and fro by conflicting views of confused men, the believer can rest and fully trust in Christ. Because in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The word dwelleth is in the continuous present tense. It means the fullness of deity has always dwelt in Christ. The fullness of deity is still dwelling in Christ even now. Not only that, the fullness of deity will always dwell in him. That's what it means when it says, in Christ dwelleth continually. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You see, when men fell, when man fell, he fell into a sad state of incompleteness. We became spiritually incomplete. We became morally incomplete. We became mentally incomplete. But now in Christ. And through Christ, we can have full redemption, full salvation, and have complete forgiveness, perfect peace, abundant grace, perfect love, complete power, complete wisdom, and everything that will make life and eternity meaningful. That means all that we need is in Christ. All that you need is in Christ. Why? Because in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Let's look at verse 3. In whom are he? All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. These erroneous teachers were saying that there are some kinds of wisdom, treasures of wisdom and knowledge that the believers at Colossae could not get if they were relying upon the Lord alone, if they were depending on the truth in Christ alone. But then the apostle Paul said, never mind them because in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It says, once you trust in Christ and depend on Christ, Anything you need, everything you need to make life and eternity meaningful, you will find in Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There is no hidden scroll where you will have something that has been lost. There is no apocrypha where you will have some kind of wisdom that has been hidden away from you. There is no lost part of the Bible where you will say, I'm searching for the lost part of the Bible where I can have some wisdom that is not in the Bible I hold in my hand. Nothing like that. And there is no angelic name. There is no other sacrifice. There is no other system of worship. There is no other ritual that you will get into so that you will be able to have some completeness that you don't have in Christ now. In Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the God head bodily. And when you trust in Christ, you will find that all that you need, you will find in him. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. Colossians 1 19. For it has pleased the Father that in him should, should all fullness dwell. Therefore, if you really want to make heaven, all you need, you'll find in Christ. You want to be happy, all you need, you find in Christ. You want power to overcome sin, all you need, you find in Christ. You want to live a life that is based on the promises of God and have every prayer answered. All you need, you find in Christ. You want to be secured in Christ. You want to be kept by the power of the Spirit of God. All you need, you will find in Christ. Therefore, understand that we are complete in Him. 
in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding and great exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws. So then, we thank God because Christ is all in all for us. Let beware, lest any man spoil any of us through philosophy of vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. What are we looking for? Spiritually, morally, mentally, materially, physically, all we need we find in Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Call upon the Lord today. Approach the throne of grace today. Pray in the name of Jesus today. Stand on the promises of the Lord today. You will discover whatever you need for now for the rest of your life and for eternity, you'll find in Christ. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. If you have been deceived, if you have been led astray, come back to Christ. Do not let the philosophies of men spoil, ensnare, enslave, or deceive, or destroy you. Rise up on your feet and talk to the Lord in prayer that you will find your completeness in Christ. You need salvation? It's in Christ. You need holiness? It's in Christ. You need power in the Holy Ghost? It's in Christ. You need perfect peace and security? It's in Christ. You need more grace? Abundant grace? You find that in Christ. You feel the need of more love in your soul towards God and towards the people of God? You find it in Christ. You need power? dynamic power that will make you an overcomer every time you find it in Christ. Are you looking for wisdom? It's in Christ too. What are you looking for? Anything and everything you need to make life meaningful you have, you have in Christ. Talk to the Lord in prayer. You'll find we're complete in Him.